Today we are working on a DIY rustic fabric scarecrow hat. This is a long one, so settle in. We're focusing on mainly using product from enablecase.com, so let's get started. What we have here is we're going to make the scarecrow hat. So we're using felt for this. You're going to need two pieces of fabric for the top portion of the hat. It's going to measure nine inches in length and eight inches tall. All right, and you need one piece for the very tip top of the hat. It's nine inches in length and four inches tall. And then you're gonna need two pieces for the brim. It's 11 inches in diameter and you could just grab like a large lid to a bowl. I actually use an oven burner cover traced around it to get the circle that I wanted, the circle size. So to start with the hat, if you are a hot gluer, you're gonna glue down one side then the other side for now all right if you're a sewer you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew of course down both sides that i just showed you where you would hot glue if you're a hot gluer of course got one side done taking it to the other side we're going to go slow on this first part because i want you to see how this is done although i have shown this process before in some other videos all right so you have both sides sh uh, sewn okay now we're going to do the top portion of the hat now this is not professional it's just my way of doing it so you're going to take this one strip and fold it in half you're going to take your scissors and we're going to round the edge on both sides now when you round it just round it and make sure when you come to the fold that it kind of is cut to a point right there you can kind of see the point doesn't have to be perfect okay and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side you're gonna kind of cut around and to a point make sure you kind of a point here because that points gonna kind of help you to do this part of the hat now this piece is extra big and I've done it this way on purpose because like I said I'm not a professional all right so you're gonna take the point of this piece we just cut and you're gonna match it to the seam of the hat and you're gonna pin this, this is the outside of the hat, right? You're gonna pin this to the inside of the hat or the right side, so to speak. You're gonna pin that point to the seam where you sewed or the seam where you hot glued. Same thing on the other side, you're gonna take that point and you're gonna pin it and if you're a hot gluer, I would suggest pinning this as well. You're gonna pin it to the right side of the hat where you've sewn it okay not the outside the ugly side that you can see which is really the inside but you know what we mean so now when we put this normally edge to edge together it doesn't work and you can see there's a great big fold here and that is because we've sewn both the outsides of the hat so it took up some of our fabric so what we're going to do is just smooth this part out until it's all nice and smooth and there's no fold just like that and it's gonna be past the top of the hat but that's okay so smooth it out so there's no fold in it and then pin it so hopefully this is understandable and that's why I've not really sped this part of the video up okay the side pin we're going to move to the other side again if you try to make the ends even right here if you try to make it even you line up the edges you're going to have that big fold so stretch your fabric outwards smooth it up until there's no fold okay and again you're going to be past the edge of the hat and then go ahead and pin it get this pinned All right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut off the excess that extends past that edge of the hat just cut it off on both sides all right so that you have two, all you both of your edges even of the top piece of the hat and the main hat so it's all nice and even just like that see everything's even nothing's sticking out and you're going to do it the same on the other side just trim it until this piece is even with the top of the hat this is my way to do it i'm not a professional that's why when we cut this one single piece i actually made it bigger than it needs to be because this is kind of the way my brain works it out to make it fit all right and then what you're going to do is everything is all nice and even the edges if you are a hot gluer 
you're going to go ahead and you're going to glue this top piece to the main hat all the way around. All right, if you're a sewer, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to change my camera view here so you can see. Just kind of straightening things out a little bit. All right, normally you might want to sew it on this side, but I would suggest turning it over so that you can manipulate the piece, the main part of the hat where we've already sewn it, okay? Because you're going to kind of need to move that piece back and forth. So I just kind of start, you know, somewhere on one side of the hat and I start sewing it here. All right? Go all the way down to the end till you get to where the seam is on the main hat, you know, that little point. Kind of move it out of the way a little bit. You've got to manipulate it just a little bit. And then right before I'm ready to go over that seam on the hat, what I do is kind of, I stick my hand in and I kind of go take my fingers down to the end and I kind of flatten that fold out. Let me adjust my camera a little bit better here. I know it's gonna be hard to see it's black fabric, but I kind of just flatten that seam out right there. Kind of pull it downward and flatten it so you can go over that seam, all right, and then lift your foot up, adjust it, and then move that seam out of the way to the left-hand side. And then you're gonna go ahead, sew all the way around on this other side here. And again, when we get to that seam on the main part of the hat, right about here, you're gonna, I go in and I kind of flatten that just a little bit, kind of pull it downward and flatten it so nothing gets caught in our needle. Sew over it. And then I'm gonna lift the foot up and turn the fabric and I'm gonna move that seam out of the way and I'm gonna finish that little half inch or so where I started earlier. There, now we've got it all sewn. You're gonna remove all your pins and our hat top part is complete. And you can go ahead and turn it right side out. Now we've got this top portion. Okay, if you do not, and go ahead and fold your bottom edge up about an inch and a half or so. If you do not want to mess with this little top portion of the hat, let's go back to the beginning. This is just a little sample piece. You got your two pieces together. All right, and go ahead and just sew or hot glue all the way around, leaving the bottom end open, just like that. You're not going to mess with that top piece or hot glue all the way around, leaving the bottom edge open. Okay, I've done this hat both ways. They're both perfectly cute. And then turn it right side out, kind of fold up your bottom edge about an inch and a half and you kind of crinkle it. Looks perfectly wonderful. This is how, you know, a different option you can work this hat. Okay, so let's start on the brim of our hat. You need your two pieces together here. I'm gonna show you a couple of design options. Now for this first option and the second one, this is black crochet string. Uh, you could probably get it at like Walmart. It's where I got mine, I believe. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna use white. You're gonna need a large like doll needle. You can definitely get those at Walmart or upholstery needle. And what we're gonna do is whip stitch the two together. So you've got a knot in one end of your string. You're gonna start it through the center of the hat in between the two layers to hide your knot. And then you're just going to take your needle, go from bottom to top, wrap it around bottom, bring it up to the top, wrap it around your hat, bottom to the top, wrap it around your hat. You're gonna do this all the way around your hat. We're just gonna do a little bit here, okay? Just to show you kind of what it would look like. Now let's pretend we've gone all the way around. We wanna hide our end here. We're gonna do it just kind of like the beginning, make sure our knot is between the two layers. So basically when you get to the end and you come to your first knot, you're just gonna kind of uh, you'll be right here, open the two layers and kind of just do a little stitch right in between at that first knot. Make a little loop, pull your needle through and tie one more little knot. Perfect, and cut it off. That's how you're gonna hide it, right between the two layers. If you're a hot gluer and you don't wanna sew, you just glue all the way around right at the very edge of your hat. All right, so here comes design option number two. Again, both layers are together. The first thing we're gonna do if you're a sewer, about an inch in, you're gonna just sew all the way around the diameter of the hat. 
and I'll show you here what it looks like in just a minute. I'm just going to sew here a little bit and finish the rest off camera. This is what it looks like sewn all the way in. This is the option I went with. If you're a hot gluer, you're going to do the same thing about an inch in and you're going to hot glue all the way around just like this. All right, so again, black crochet thread, we're going to use white for contrast, except just for a minute, we're going to have a little fur baby break. She decided to get in on the action here. I think she saw it and wanted to lay on it because we've taught her to lay on like blankets and I laid that down and she's like, it's a blanket. I want to lay on it, even though she was already laying on another blanket at the top of my project here. A couple of little pets. Get her back over to other blanket and let's continue. So design option number two, it's the same thing as the bottom, except we're going to whip stitch around each layer of the hat. Okay. Oh, here she comes again. Sorry, you guys. We're going to layer around or whip stitch around each layer of the hat. So pretend that's all the way around. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, the other part of the brim. We're going to whip stitch all the way around. So you'd have it like this all the way around and you'd have it like this all the way around. So you're just kind of doing it double on each layer instead of putting both layers together. Okay, so now let's go on to getting our hat prepared. What you're going to need is one bottle of white school glue and a nice large Ziploc bag. You're going to dump that whole bottle of glue in. Then you're going to need two of this bottle of glue filled with water and dump that in. Okay. Then I use instant coffee. I get this at Walmart. It's like 86 cents for a box. I use two of these. All right. So you'd cut two open and dump it in. Now alternate if you want to use cinnamon and there's no rhyme or reason. I just open it up and dump in how much I want. Close your bag up nice and tight. You're probably going to want to wear some gloves. This tends to get sticky and you're going to squish everything together nice and good. Now you need some tinfoil, just some cheapy tinfoil. I lay a couple pieces down on an old pan. I usually use two pans, one for the top, one for the bottom. The pieces I'm going to use here are mini pieces because my hat is already done. All right, you're going to ball up some tinfoil. You need a few to ball up for your hat. And then what you can do is you take your hat, leave that folded piece up. Okay. Make, remember we folded that end up, leave it folded up and you're going to take your hat and you're going to douse it in this mixture, get it all nice and soaked and then wring it out. Just like I'm doing here. You want it just completely soaked. All right. And then once that's done, kind of open everything back up. Remember, make sure the bottom of your hat's folded up. We're going to need that later and then stuff those tin foil balls inside. You're going to lay it and then I kind of crunch it and crinkle it up. You're going to lay it on your pan. Now remember, this is just a little miniature piece to show you because mine is already done. And then I turn it over, crinkle it up and it's ready to go. Then on a second pan, you've got the brim and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take that in. You're going to squish it all in your mixture here. You're going to wring it out because it's just soaked. And you're going to lay this on your pan as well. And usually what I like to do is I will take like a little piece of tin foil. I scrunch it up. I take a little piece of tin foil here. I think I'm looking around for it. Here we go. Kind of make a little tube and I kind of lay it under one end just so that one end's kind of sticking up. All right. Now, when I double brimmed my hat, I want to show you what I did here. This is a double piece. This is our one we kind of worked here on the video. What I did is dipped it in the mixture, of course, crinkled it all up, and then I made some really flat pieces of tin foil. I rolled them out in a tube and I flattened them up. And then I laid that tin foil between the two layers of the hat. Now this is only if you did two separate layers. If you sewed both pieces together, you're not going to do this part. You're just going to kind of crinkle your hat up and then, you know, you can lay some tin foil under one edge. If you want one part of your hat to kind of bake in an upward motion or something like that. Okay. And then once it's all done, you're going to take it to the oven on 200. 225 degrees and you're going to bake it for about 20 minutes 
and then you're going to pull it out, you're going to flip it over, and you're going to bake it another 20 minutes. Then you're going to take it out, flip it over, bake another 20 minutes, take it out, flip it over, bake another 20 minutes. You've done this four times until it's completely done, and then take it out and let it cool off. If you are a hot gluer, you cannot bake this. You have to just get your hat and everything set up and you've got to let it dry on its own and it will take a couple of days. It took me, I tried this, took me a couple of days to, I let it dry and then I went in the next day and then I had to flip it over and uh, both pieces the hat and let it dry another day. So it's a longer process, but if you've hot glued, if you try to bake it, you're just gonna melt your hot glue all over the place. So you have to let it dry naturally. Okay, this process is done, so let's decorate our hat. Let's get to the fun part. Here's my hat. It's all completely stiff, as you can tell, wrinkled, crinkled, because that's the way I baked it. You can see how the layers are where I put the tin foil between it. It's all nice and hard, and if you air dried it because you hot glued it, it will get nice and hard, but not as hard as this, but it will be nice and stiff for you to decorate. So this is what we've come up with. Now, the part that we folded up go ahead and fold that back down and the reason I fold it up is to leave me a nice little seam there and we're just gonna cut into this up to that fold line just a couple inches apart all the way around because what we need to do is glue this hat to the brim of course and this will help by cutting slits up to that fold mark and then go ahead and just fold all those smaller pieces inward right on that fold line and then what I'm going to do I've not done this before usually I will sit and glue all the pieces kind of together and then glue it onto the hat but this time I'm going to actually take it because nobody's going to get poked if you uh, sell this at a craft show or anything like that I'm using these nice short little stick pins and I am pinning all these pieces together because the other way that I like I said I will usually glue it together I got to kind of wait for each section to dry hot gluing I've tried that doesn't really hold as well uh, doing this portion so it's I thought this would be easier and it was so I'm just pinning all these little slits together and then if you're a hot gluer you can glue this whole thing down but this kind of really helped to hold these pieces inward better all right so it's all done here and then I am going to be using we're gonna that's where we find where you want to kind of put it on your hat All nice and ready here and I'm going to use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today if you're a hot gluer you can use your hot glue here's my Beacon Fabri-Tac and I'm going to put ample glue all the way around you want to make sure you use a lot of hot glue if you're a hot gluer I am using ample Beacon Fabri-Tac glue you can see how much is here I'm going to set it where I want it on the hat and I kind of just hold down on it for a few seconds and let it sit for about five minutes or so before I start decorating. So our hat is all ready here. Now this is a piece of cheesecloth. You can get this at like Walmart. This is some ribbon I got from my own supply here and I've cut its wire ribbon. I've cut the wire pieces off. This is some fabric out of my supply and I've cut that down. I'm just kind of fraying the edges here. I want everything to be all frayed and worn. This is just another little piece of fabric cut kind of a little two inch square and I'm kind of fraying the edges as well. And we're gonna start decorating this scarecrow hat. It's gonna be so cute. This is just a piece of kind of mesh wired ribbon. I'm cutting the wire edges off. As I mentioned earlier, I've done hats like this in the past. I will make sure I link that down below for you. It's a Frosty the Snowman hat and a Santa hat. So I'll link that down below for you. So we're gonna start with this little two inch square. It's kind of like our little patch and I've got a piece of rusty wire here. I just wrap it around a paintbrush kind of get it all nice and curly and then I've got some of these rusty safety pins and I rested this wire and the safety pin myself I will make sure I link that down below for you on how to do that with uh, just some household supplies and I'm just putting this wire I kind of just made a little loop at the bottom and I'm pinning it with the safety pin to our little uh, fabric patch here so to speak just like that 
and I'm going to go ahead and take it and use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. Uh, first, I'm using this scrapbooking ink. It's by Tim Holtz. It's Ranger Distress Oxide ink. Uh, I use lots of these ink colors today. I'll show you the colors they are, but I'm using this walnut stain just to kind of make this fabric patch look kind of stained up. But you can get any of these inks at like Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's. Renee does also have some of these uh, they are distress inks, not the oxide inks, but she does have some distress inks in her supply uh, in the dot com store. Uh, and then I go ahead and glue on the fabric patch. Again, you could use hot glue for this entire project, of course. The first thing I'm going to do is just wrap around this cheesecloth. I'm using this cheesecloth because it's real distressed and stringy. I want this hat to look like it's been, uh, you know, on a scarecrow head out in the cornfield, been sitting out there for years, getting weathered and worn and rusty. And so that is kind of my overall vision for how I want this hat to look today. So I place the cheesecloth down first. So, um, and I will kind of adjust it here a little bit so that some of the edges will poke out beneath my uh, ribbon here and then I'm just kind of gluing my ribbon over the top of that here's where I'm going to start pulling out some of the cheesecloth around the edges all this will cover up uh, the where we glued the hat to the brim so no worries if you got some hot glue or liquid glue coming out around where we glued the top hat to the brim because it's all going to get covered up right here with our ribbons and things just kind of gluing all this into place leaving one end open. We're not going to quite mess with this uh, end yet until we get these glued down. And of course you can use whatever you want here. You don't have to use cheesecloth, uh, any, you know, whatever you want. You can use strips of fabric. So now I'm taking this uh, cheesecloth, just kind of tying it a half knot and then uh, going to tie this ribbon in a half knot. And again, if you don't have ribbons, you can rip up strips of fabric and use here it would look perfect. And I'm bringing out some rusty fence wire. Those of you know, I've been doing a lot of fall stuff and I've got a big roll of rusty fence wire in the backyard I cut from. So just kind of folded a piece of that up and I'm tucking it right behind the ribbon here after I kind of half knotted each ribbon and cheesecloth. And here comes that walnut stain ink again. I'm just gonna kind of ink up. I've got a little ink dauber here and just kind of inking up the cheesecloth and the ribbons and the fabric to make them look all worn and rustic here. I'm gonna cut my ribbon off a little bit and fray the edges. It's a little bit long. Okay, gonna ink up this fabric like I mentioned earlier. I've got it already tied in a bow. I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit too. Cut the tails down off just a little bit and fray the edges. And then we'll go ahead and glue this on right in the center down there with the cheesecloth and the other ribbon. This is some wired rope. I've kind of frayed the edges and I'm inking it up a little bit. Be using that ink a lot to kind of uh, distress everything. A little excess wire there I wanted to cut off and we're going to go ahead and glue this down right at the bottom of our ribbon so it kind of sticks off right out at the edge. You're going to marvel at how much stuff we get on this hat today. You should just settle in because here we go. We're going to use this kind of meshy type ribbon. Just kind of crinkling it up and putting it down in here as well. And just, you know, use what you've got in your supply. Use these wonderful Renee Bouquet pieces here. This is Renee Bouquet Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. These are quilling leaves. They come in a set of six. I have inked them, this Distress Ink in Black Soot. I've inked a couple of them. This is Ivy Vine Tuck It In, Renee Bouquet's. All these pieces coming up, I've inked it as well. These little pieces here all come in a set. It's a set of 23 fancy fall tuck-ins, the leaves and the corn and this piece here and the acorns. I've inked this piece up already. I'll show you how to ink a few of these up coming up. Walnut Stain in Amber here. This is Sweet as Honey, Beautiful Words from Renee Bouquet. I've inked up the sweet in a black soot. These are Pumpkin Patch. They come in two designs in different sizes. I'm showing you some different sizes here. I'm going to use the small size of this design. And these are beautiful bits called pumpkins. We're going to be using a couple of these in our supply today. I've already colored it up, but again, I will show you what I did. So I use this kind of uh, spice marmalade walnut stain 
and this fossilized amber it's kind of a green shade so orange green and brown here we're going to color up one of the pumpkins so you can see what we did or what i did and the corn going to color up some corn here all right we're going to start with the the orange shade i'm using these little daubers going to just kind of ink up the bottom of the corn and beautiful board laser cut chipboard is real easy to color with inks and sprays and emboss anything like that these are real great to work with and, and change up the color i couldn't find my ink pad so i'm using my finger here i'm going to ink up the top a little bit so it's kind of a yellowish green color golden yellow i guess I'll show you how i did the leaves here just black soot just like this right on it using my heat tool both sides everything I did is both sides but I think some of the pieces I just show you one side but I do both sides and then we're gonna uh, dry up the ink and I'm coming in with that walnut stain to add a little bit of brown to it as well so it's not just totally black just want everything to kind of be the oranges and the blacks and the browns and the greens so everything matches this is what it looks like one of the leaves coming in with some peeled paint a green color here just daubing on some green, drying the ink, and then coming in with a little bit of that brown just right on the edges just to make it look a little natural. Again, drying it. So you can kind of see how we work these pieces here, nice and easy. Here's how we did the pumpkin. All right, I'm coming in with the orange first on about three quarters of the pumpkin on the bottom. Dry that right up. And then we'll come in with kind of this golden yellow color on one end of it and kind of add that golden yellow just to give it like a multi-tone hue here coming in with the green because there's a tiny little leaf we'll color that right up and then we'll come in with the brown and get the stem and the little curly cue dry that up uh, with the heat tool and that's how we get the colors on the pumpkins super easy fun like i said renee does carry some inks in her shop i will make sure i link some of those down below for you these are renee bouquet mulberry flowers in dark brown and the cinnamon um, i did not use the one that is the cinnamon and sugar i went ahead and just used dark brown on my project today these are two butterflies i wasn't sure which one i was going to use from renee bouquets the top one is called hello autumn and the bottom one is watercolor rustic autumn and i end up using the bottom butterfly Here's some of the acorns from the Fancy Fall Tuck-Ins. These are all the pieces I've colored today. So this is the Fancy Fall Tuck-Ins we'll be using. And then the Ivy Vine Tuck-Ins and our quilling leaves and our pumpkin patch and our tiny beautiful bit pumpkins and our sweet word. So those are the kind of the products we'll be using. Now we're going to start adding some stuff to our hat here. I'm using some uh, pine cones. These are from my Christmas supply. You know, usually around Christmas now, the Christmas supply is out, so you can buy, uh, they actually were mini ornaments, so you can buy uh, tiny uh, pine cones and like Dollar Tree has pine cones, things like that, um, that you can get a hold of. And right now I'm just kind of seeing where I want a few things here and there before I start gluing things down. This is a little mesh uh, tubing I'm plugging in here going to add that for a little bit of texture like i said you will be amazed on what we get on this hat today going to start gluing in some of these pine cones i didn't want to speed this video up that much so that you could really see this process normally i speed it up a little faster uh, but that's why this video is a little long today and i don't like to just decorate the side of the hat i will also decorate the front which is why you see the pine cone coming in here and i also decorate around the back so it all looks nice and even these are just some pumpkin picks out of my supply here comes some of the renee bouquet mulberry flowers in dark brown just kind of tucking them in and around those uh, ribbons and fabric pieces some more of these cute little tiny pumpkin picks adding another pine cone here so it ties in with all the other pine cones we used along the side and the front i'm going to kind of stay on the back side here for a moment this is some excelsior um, and i did this one off camera but you will see me throughout the process as i use excelsior i use some of that brown ink and i ink it up 
so that it's not quite just white. It has a nice kind of, uh, you know, worn um, color to it. Here comes some Renee Bouquet beautiful board uh, from the fall tuck-ins I'm tucking in here. I tucked in an acorn pick just right before that. You'll see that again, moving out my pieces, bringing in some of the cute little uh, beautiful bits from Renee Bouquet's, the little tiny pumpkins, tucking them in around the pine cones. Tucking in, these are some from acorn picks. Kind of pulled it off the pick, the acorn here, and I'm gonna tuck this in. And we're just getting started. Right here comes some Excelsior. Here's where you see me start inking it up just so that it looks more worn and goes in with the rest of the hat, looks more rustic. Gonna glue some of this in and around the project. Take that acorn back off, get that in and plug that acorn back in. This is some grapevine wire. I've kind of curly cued it up. I'm gonna tuck it in kind of on the side so it's around at the back a little bit, adds a little texture. And this is some paper covered wire. Kind of curly cued that up. We're gonna add that in on the side here. Again, adding some texture. I'll give you a little peek here in just a minute. Here we go, this is what it looks like. Looking good. All right, tucking in some wood leaves from my supply here. This is one of the quilling leaves from Renable K Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. We're gonna tuck that in on the back side here. Some of the tiny little acorns from the fall tuck-ins. These are just some uh, berry beaded garland from my supplier. We're gonna tuck that in. So we're of course working with browns, 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 oranges, and greens today just to keep it in those nice fall colors. Here comes some more Excelsior. We're gonna start tucking this in and around just, you know, making it look nice and fall. Just if it, like I said, this hat's been in the cornfield for years and hay and weeds and everything flying around kind of gives us, you know, kind of got stuck in the hat. That's kind of my vision here. Tucking some more acorns in. I've been wanting to use these corn cobs for years, corn on the cob from the Fancy Fall Tuck-Ins. I love the Fancy Fall Tuck-Ins. A set of 23, you can't go wrong. And like I said, I've been wanting to use them for years. So I finally got to use them on this project. Tucking in a few little pumpkins here, the little tiny pumpkins again. You can see what it's looking like here. All right, tucking in just some more little berry picks from my supply. We're getting there. More Excelsior, and basically it's nice with the Excelsior. You just kind of tuck it in where it might look a little bare, and it just kind of helps fill in the gaps. Here comes some of those ivy uh, vine tuck-ins here from Rene Bouquets. I kind of like how I painted some of those products black. Here's some of those pumpkins. I glued them together, twisted them on a wire so that I could tuck that wire in so they stick up against the side a little bit like that. But I like coloring some of the, the Renee Bouquet pieces kind of the black and a little bit of brown color because that way they're there but they don't like, are not in your face, but they add to kind of the decor. It looked really nice, I thought. Just tucking in some more of these uh, picks here. And of course, what I do is just fall picks. You know, you can cut them apart. A little goes a long way. Cutting apart the little acorn fall picks here and stuff. Poking them in and around all the little open areas I can get anything into. Decide I wanted to add a little more rusty wire here. So I'm going to kind of tuck it in right at the bottom underneath that bottom pine cone. Kind of sticking out the side again. Going to add in another... Um, acorn here from the fall tuck-ins. Going to tuck it right into one of the Renee Bouquet Mulberry Flowers in Dark Brown and we're going to go ahead and glue that right in. So see where I'm like tucking all the little acorns and the corn on the cob and things, leaves and things like that. You can tuck them into the flowers, anything like that. Going to add another uh, pine cone here. These are our friends today. And these all in this spot, trying to leave one spot open because I am going to tuck a large wood slice in here later, believe it or not. <laughs> all right, another pick. We're going to kind of match what we did on the back side a little bit. So coming in with the uh, acorn picks, 
and pine cones. This one has a little bit, acorn has a little bit of a mess up here on it. So I'm just taking some ink that matches kind of closely and filling in that area. And then I'll make sure when I glue this in that I glue that part down. But first I want to go ahead and add in some Excelsior. I've got the inks all stacked up under the hat so you guys can see here. So I had to find my one brown ink again so I could ink up this Excelsior and then tuck that right in. Filling up space, making it all look nice and full, and then we'll go ahead and glue in this acorn pick here. More Excelsior. Again, Excelsior is our friend today. We're just about done with this hat, believe it or not. Back in with the quilling leaf so it matches where we used one on the back side. Want everything to tie together. Here's a tiny little wood slice. I'm just inking it up a little bit so it's not so blaring white in color. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down. I'm going to use it like a base. So Renee Bouquet, these leaves here have a center and they pop out. This is from the fall tuck-in. So that's what I'm using right here. I've inked it up. And I'm just going to glue it onto this little pumpkin here, this uh, little styrofoam pumpkin making sure where I want to put it at. There we go. Now this little pumpkin, um, and then I've inked the stem up and I'm gonna glue the stem back in. Finish my thought here in just a second. Now this little pumpkin, you can see the colors of it. All right, this is what it started with, just kind of this off-white kind of creamy yellow pumpkin. So I took these like brownish red and a brown and kind of a golden color and just kind of inked it up to make it the color to match the hat. Just use my fingers and rub the ink on all over different patterns and whatever to make it match nicely. And then glued that on top of the wood slice and I'm gonna glue in my little corn on the cob here. Here's the larger wood slice. I've cut two circles of cardstock to kind of fit just inside on each of the wood slice here. Sewed around the edges and I glued both of those on and I'm gonna glue this wood slice in right there just sticking out a little bit and this is our title i've got a little thing here i printed onto some cardstock says autumn and i sewed around the edge and then that sweet word that i showed you earlier that was the sweet as honey use the sweet part of the top and glued that right on top and then onto the wood slice so it says sweet autumn and then here comes our watercolor rustic autumn butterfly we're going to glue that right on the patch there and then we're going to finish up using some Renee Bouquet glitter glass chunky glitter glass called gaudy girl glitter glass in black using 3d matte gel this is a matte medium if you don't have a matte medium you can use glue for this process but make sure it's a glue that dries clear and I just dip my paintbrush into my matte medium and I paint it on then I pour the glitter glass on top and then I turn my project over and tap off the excess into a drip pan and I'm going to repeat this process all the way around till I get the desired effect that I want so I'm just kind of putting it around in spots here dipping it on again with my paintbrush pouring the glitter glass on kind of pressing it on a little bit and then dumping off the excess. And I call it glitter glass because it really is glass. So if you touch it, it's not gonna cut you right away, but just don't press into it really hard or anything like that if you use it on your project and tap onto it. And Renee does have a ton of beautiful shades of this glitter glass in her store. But once this uh, glitter glass is on how I want it, this project, believe it or not, is complete. Well, I bet you did not think we were going to get all these little bits and baubles on this scarecrow hat. I told you we were going to fill it up, and we did. I think this hat turned out marvelous. I just love it. I love the rusticness of it, the warmness of it, the weathered look. I just think it turned out great. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos from me. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you like this hat, if you love this hat, if you can't wait to make this hat for your own home decor. 
Remember, I will have the links down below to the product I used from Renee Bouquets on this project today. There will also be a coupon code down below for you from Renee Bouquets, good for the month of October. I will also have links down below to everything Renee Bouquets, where to shop, the Renee Bouquets Facebook page, Renee Bouquet Artist with an Edge Facebook group, Pinterest, anything you want, it is down there for Renee Bouquets. I will also have links down below to the other videos I mentioned, the links to the Frosty hat, the Santa hat that uses the same type of technique, and the link on how to rest your own medals. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.